Hello friends, believers. Once again, we are not congregating, but we are still reaching out to each other as we remain conscious of our duty to fulfill God's commands. In these shutdown days, we are reminded of how the apostles were forcibly shut away to prevent the spread of the gospel. But how they still effectively carried out God's mandate in an era where communication was so very limited. Let's see it as our turn to be resourceful and effective in converting the lost with God's message just as they did. So here's a question. Have you ever wanted to attend a special occasion but something prevented you from doing so? Disappointing, right? I know that I have. In one instance that stands out in my mind, it wasn't something that prevented me, it was my parents. On the other hand, have you ever been invited to something but you didn't want to go and you found something else that would prevent you from going. In Luke chapter 14, um, Jesus told a story of a man who invited people to his special occasion, but they found excuses not to attend. Verses 18 to 20 in the New Living Translation. But they all began to make excuses. One said, I have bought a field and must inspect it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought a pair of oxen and I want to try them out. Please excuse me. Another one said, I just got married so I can't come. What I notice here is that the excuses didn't stop the celebration. It went ahead with a totally different set of guests. I know that you recall the excuses made to Jesus in chapter 9 at his own invitation to follow him. Verse 69 includes, And he said unto another, Follow me. That's the invitation. One person asked for time to bury his father. Another wanted to say goodbye to his family. I know we would call these legitimate excuses, but Jesus countered them all. Friends, that same invitation to become a disciple is being given to all of us today. But something is holding us back. What is keeping us back? What excuse are we offering? This command to follow him is much more than just the physical following. It is a command to be like him in every aspect, not to copy some of his actions when it is convenient. Paul says to us, imitate me as I imitate Christ. As we focus on praise and worship this month, we can find plenty of quotations in the Bible regarding our command to worship but something keeps getting in the way of our daily worship. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 28 from the Passion Translation. Since we have received our rights to be to an unshakable kingdom, we should be extremely thankful and offer God the purest worship that delights his heart as we lay down our lives in absolute surrender, filled with awe. Offering that purest worship has to be our main goal, but we cannot achieve it without the absolute surrender mentioned. Of course, to fully surrender, we have to be totally dependent on God's grace. We in ourselves are not strong enough on our own to maintain that full surrender. So it is a matter of daily asking for and receiving 
grace from God to serve him acceptably. We cannot worship God acceptably unless we worship him with godly reverence and fear as the King James Version puts it. It is only the grace of God that enables us to worship God in a right manner. Yes, we will have that desire and the goal to do so, but to be fully effective, we need the help of the same God which we are serving. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15 from uh, the Amplified Version this time. Through him, therefore, let us at all times offer up to God a sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of lips that thankfully acknowledge and confess and glorify his name. Here is how the Passion Translation puts it. So, we no longer offer up a steady stream of blood sacrifices, but through Jesus, we will offer up to God a steady stream of praise sacrifices. These are the lambs we offer from our lips that celebrate the name of God. Verse 16, we will show mercy to the poor and not miss an opportunity to do acts of kindness for others for these are the true sacrifices that delights God's heart so as we pause this is our time to reflect on the things that keep us back from fulfilling our goal of carrying out God's mandate our goal of living up to his expectations on a daily basis check on the things that you that are keeping you back from full surrender and pure worship find biblical biblical ways to counter whatever is holding us back ask god for help and remember first corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31 passion translation again whatever you do live your life in a way that glorifies and honors God so blessings my friend may you continue to be guided by God's Spirit and may his grace be always with you amen amen blessings my friends blessings